It is my great pleasure and honor to be here today, and I thank all of you to be here. And I was surprised to see Fully Book at the workshop on Saturday, 1 o'clock, reasonable weather, beautiful Vienna, last day. And I will try to satisfy the expectation, trying to show you my experience and my ideas and the experts' ideas, mutuated from guidelines, reported in papers, but showing in the daily practice how to use the tips and tricks to obtain what is called the warranted or the tailored examinations. Firstly, we start from thyroid. Then I will talk about salivary glands, and I will also give you some feedbacks on lymph nodes, because we are doing a very nice prospective studies to try to cover what is still considered the Achilles tendons in our diagnostic imaging. I usually start to do a research when I have some doubts, some questions to be answered. So I look at the literature, and I see what is present, what is still missing. At that time, when we started, we understood that still we need something more to address the possibility to reduce the number of unnecessary biopsy and the unnecessary thyroidectomy. How to do it? Which are the new tools that we can use in daily practice to try to overcome this kind of limitations? Firstly, epidemiology. We know that the number of pulper nodules is increasing every year, several factors behind. Another factor is due to the fact that we are every day scanned by ultrasound for different reasons, and incidental findings are very common. We have to take into account that, in general, the majority of thyroid nodules are benign. However, also the incidence of the malignant ones is increasing. But then, at the end of the day, we have to ask, what is the real outcome of these patients. How many of them really needed to be treated soon? And how to choose the right surgery or the mini-invasive treatment as well? What we usually do, first imaging modality is ultrasound, color Doppler ultrasound. It is very effective to depict also lesions that are smaller than one centimeter, we are detecting sub-millimeter lesion right now. But this is also a problem, because unfortunately, to characterize those very small, tiny lesions is very complicated. Usually, what we have to report, the presence or the absence of lesions, we have to describe where they are located, the number of them, the dimensions, and then provide the echo structures. Echo structure may be solid, may be liquid, may be mixed. And then within it, we have to provide hyper iso hypercogenicity. And then we have to describe the contour, the limits. Because the borders, if they are infiltrated, they are worrisome. If not, it could be a benign sign. But I will show you what is uh, the sensitivity and the specificity of the, of the single signs. Then we have to describe what is considered not a worrisome sign, but the benign sign, the peripheral halo. But also, if you depict a peripheral halo, you need to be very precise to describe, because sometimes it can be asymmetric, and this is a worrisome sign. Then we describe the distribution. If the lesion show a vertical growth, this means that it's going against the nature, because in general, gravity helps to create the increase of the dimension on the horizontal plane. If it happens in the vertical plane, it was already described and proved in breast, but right now is also considered a worrisome sign for papillary carcinoma, which is the majority of the malignant nodules. And then vascularization. In the 90s, everyone started to use color Doppler, and everyone starting from the Folkman assumption, what is neovascularized could be considered worrisome. If they look at the nodule and found vascularized nodule, they stated this should be submitted to find needle aspiration. I was one of the first who claimed about that sign because I found in my experience, probably because at also at that time I had very good equipment, but I found that at that time, 60% of benign nodules were, were highly vascularized. 
and only 70% of malignant show the same appearance. So it was like throwing up a coin, and then let's see what is the result. Right now, color doppler is not included in any kind of tires. About tires, we will talk later. Therefore, let's look at single, different, specific findings. We know that the presence of microclassification could be considered worrisome. The presence of markedly hypoecogenicity. Markedly hypoecogenicity. How can you really be sure that it's markedly hypoecogenicity? You have to combine, compare with the muscle. If it is lower than muscle, it is markedly hypoecogenicity. If it is similar to muscle, it is mildly hypoecogenicity. So, remind, this is objective, subjective evaluation. Secondly, microclassification, hypoecogenicity, margins. Of course, we are doing 2D examination. I will show you with this new machine, you can do the 2D, 3D examination. Same probe, only one sweep, and then you obtain really the representation of the vascularization and all the entire volume of the nodule that helps you to better define. And then, of course, taller than wide. But if you look at sensitivity and specificity, if you have a sign who has high sensitivity, conversely, it shows low specificity. And at the end, the good friend of mine, Rago and Vitti, and you will see that we published recently the guidelines of all the society together, concluded that unfortunately, no signs, no single ultrasound sign is enough accurate to make the diagnosis. Therefore, we tried to mutate what was already established for breast. From birads, we started to use tyrads. Unfortunately, to now, we have nine tyrads. Not to universally use it. Why? And I, I would like to ask you, how many of you use tyrads? Okay, 15, 20 person over 80, 90 is not bad. In general, the number is lower. But which tyrads are you using? European? European? So, the Horvath. Yes. Yours. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> European. Okay. I will show you some results about the comparison between them, but still, there is much confusion. So, we need to go through it. According to the presence of the literature to now, the most used is the K WAC, the quack. But, and according to it, we suggested to use tyres. However, look at the consensus. 57%. 60% of the experts were in favour of tyres, 40 were against. Why? Or what? It was proved that there was higher interobserver variability compared with the elastography. Other reason behind. Here I summarized all the different available tyres, and if you look, the differences are not so high they describe from three to five class, class, class of risk, the, the K-tyrants. And then uh, if we review some cases together, it would be interesting to understand how do you classify the lesion. For instance, this one, according to Quack, is three, is mixed deletion. How do you rate? Follow up, so benign. Okay, it's true, it's true. Yeah, but we are, we, yeah, yeah, okay, yes, of course, it is, it, it is uh, firstly based on lab analysis, follow up. Okay, so benign, still benign. This one starts to be solid. According to Quack, is 4A. According to Kappa, is 4. According to other, is 3. So that's, that's the, now we're starting to have some confusion. This one, okay, it starts to be worrisome. Not yet. It, it, it does not say that. It, it say not. Was papillary carcinoma? The other one. Yeah, the other one. That, that's strange. I, I know, I know. Unfortunately, and I will show you the results, also using tyrants. This one and this one, taller, microclassification, fairly marginated, hypercogenicity. Okay. What we did, we did the review 
retrospectively, with all the endocrinologists group in my university, I have the luck that I have a very good endocrinologist. One of them published three papers in JAMA, one in New England Journal, and now he's really, really the one who is followed to understand the natural history of the nodule. Because what is important is to understand, if I follow up this patient, this, this nodule, how much does it increase in size? And then, if it increases in size, how much of the number of those nodules will be malignant or benign? So, what we did, we compared the different tyrants. Because, because still too many biopsy, so we need to find a way to reduce the number of biopsy. Then, unfortunately, inter-observer variability, time-consuming, and confusion. We found at the end of the results that the American one was quite better in sensitivity, but not in specificity. And the others, the K tyrants and the others, were very similar. If you look at this table, sorry, here are all the different tyrants. Here are the numbers you will see that are very, very similar. And the European and the ACSA has better sensitivity, but look at specificity, dramatically low. This is uh, how do they summarize the different uh, also possibility to decide according to the size, according to the score, which one is the nodule that should be submitted or not to find needle aspiration. At the end, we know that we really work on it to find a way to reduce the inter-observer variability, to reduce the consistency, the time consuming. Therefore, we started also to look at different classification, different society recommendation, which one are the one that should be submitted to find the aspiration. Also in that case, there is no universal consensus. And if you look at fine needle aspiration, how many of them are really effective? 10% first try can give fast negative results. Can be reduced, but still it is a non-invasive, but still invasive procedure and cost. Therefore, we started to use something new. We know by the ancient Egypt, and it is due to Hippocrates, that we included palpation as part of physical examination of our patient. However, we know also that digital palpation is subjective and limited. Depends on the patient, depends on your experience, depends on where the lesion is located. MRI was the first imaging modality to include the study with elastography. However, the results are not yet very well established it works for prostate, it works for liver, it works for brain, but still is not included in the daily life. And the software are expensive and not widespread usage. Therefore, ultrasound field started to use this kind of new software, the elastosonography. It helps us to show tissue stiffness or deformability rather than anatomy. And combining the two information we try to have another additional value of our examination. We have to divide two different types of elastography. The strain, or so-called quasi-static, means that you can palpate through the probe the nodule, and then you make compression, or you may use the pulsatility coming from carotid artery, and then you achieve the deformability of the nodule, and according to it, there will be a colorization of the entire field, polychromatic map representation, qualitative subjective evaluation. Then you put two ROI, one within the nodule, another one on the corresponding, at same level, thyroid parenchyma, and then you have the strain ratio. Semi-quantitative evaluation. Soon after was introduced share wave. ShareWave uses a push, a push pulse that can give a transmission of the waves. And the waves transmitting, depending on how much hard is the nodule, they will be transmitted and deflected higher or lower 
with the speed and elasticity that can be measured. And with this technique, we can have quantitative volition. And to now, we already start to say, this is the best one. Let's discuss about it, and I will show you what is the evidence to now of all the experts. Firstly, when we start to do something, and when we need to convince patients, and firstly, ourselves to do something, we need to remember what Claude Bernard was used to say in his introduction of the study of experimental. Experimental medicine is nothing more than a reasoning by means of which the ideas undergo onto the control of facts. What we need, we need to have robust data coming from multi-center studies, or we need evidence-based guidelines. We were lucky to have the possibility to work together, radiologists, non-radiologists, under FSUM umbrella, and we did publish several guidelines in different fields, CUS and now ELASTO. These are the two that we firstly published in Ultrashall. Good news, you can just Google FSUM website and you can upload for free. As editor of Ultrashall, I'm pushing on Ultrashall to make more educational paper for free for everybody. Secondly, WUFUM, that is the World Federation, also published personal own guidelines. I was uh, one of the few of EFSUM involved also in thyroid and prostate guidelines, and we publish in ultrasound medicine and biology. Not good news. These are for, not for free, so you have to pay, unfortunately. Ultrasound medicine and biology still does not allow. How does it work? You press, and then you have this representation. Or you just press a button, there is a transmission of the waves, and the waves arrive here, and here you have a specific, unique feature provided by this machine. You have the propagation wave. So you can see real time, parallelly with all the other images, baseline, share wave, plus on kilopascal or meter per second, and then you can really see how do the waves propagate? And according to it, I would like to remind to all of you to find the right protocol to obtain better results. And I will show you how to do. Firstly, let's start with strain and astrography. What is strain? Strain means deformability. If a body is compressed, it may deformate according to the stiffness. If it is more stiff, it deformates less. If it is soft, it deformates more. But what is the results that we can achieve with this machine? We can see the polychromatic representation. First element to take in mind, the polychromatic representation could be changed, could be different in any equipment that you use, and you can change it. It's like color Doppler, red or blue. It depends on you. It depends on how you decide to turn to change your equipment. Secondly, we started and we found that was too much subjective because we were not able to have an indicator of quality compression that helped us in real time to be sure that we were doing properly or not. Afterwards, Canon, also thanking our street cooperation, decided to provide you this kind of uh, real-time waveform shaped qualitative indicator that can help you. Could you press on the video, please? So what is important is we have to do this firm, precise, vertical compression. You have to use the color box in the right way, including a part upwards and a part downwards, including the lesion and the thyroid. Then you look at your polychromatic map, and then you can continue with your examination. Some tips and tricks. Box. How big? I told you. Secondly, look also for the presence of some artifacts. If there are artifacts, repeat. Third, look at the polychromatic map representation. 
then look at quality control indicator. If it is really fitting with the scheme, the rectangle should be fulfilled with yellow or completely or part of it. Now you can do the step forward. You can put ROI, one within the lesion, another one within the tiled, avoiding the artifacts, and then you look at the number. So this is what you should do every day with strain. After that, now you have to look at the results. This is the classification that I'm using in daily life, the modified Rubaltelli classification published in Ultrashall, based on uh, Ueno Ito that was referring to breast. After that, there were the specific one for tired. Score one means that the lesion is completely soft. 100% yellow, green, according to the scale that you are using. Meanwhile, conversely, the score four should be completely, completely unelastic. But now we have to put in the daily life. This is the some prerequisite. Let's see with some example. First case, the lesion is completely soft. Second case, the lesion is almost completely soft, but still there are some stiff areas, less than 25%. Now we are entering in the gray zone. 3A, 3B, less than 50% is 3A, more than 50% is 3B. Most probably, if I ask you, we could divide each other to say 3A or 3B. 3B, mostly unelastic, still with some soft areas. And then finally, the last one, the lesion that is completely, totally unelastic. And I will show you later a detail that it is important to predict the worrisome disease from not worrisome disease. After the first evaluation with the qualitative polychromatic representation, you may do the strain ratio. We were one of the first group to publish about this new technique. What was important at that time, no cutoff values were available. And unfortunately, this is still the Achilles tendons of this technique. Any machine has a different cutoff. And the cutoff, unfortunately, is not a fixed cutoff so should be personally evaluated. With this machine, usually, now there is a consensus of all the experts that 2 plus less 0 0.5 could be the cutoff value. So this is what I usually I do. The best B-mod image. Then you do elasto. Then you do the evaluation with the strain ratio. And then you compare, of course, with the cytology or histology. This was a benign lesion. This was the worrisome one that I showed you. Look, completely blue. Then we put two Roy. Look at the number. Number is very high, seven. But what is also important to underline? The size. If a lesion, after the strain elastography, increases in size compared with the baseline, this is a worrisome sign. It was reported for breast, but there are three, four papers right now in literature that are confirming, and also my pathology are confirming that when I tell, told them, you know, it was eight millimeter, after elasto is one centimeter, this is a worrisome sign. And also Richard Barr and other experts agree about it. So this is what usually I report. This is a lesion, I describe the lesion, I describe strain elastography, and then share where I will show you later, and then I conclude with my assumption. Again, just to remind, remember, box, size, position, avoid the artifacts, quality control, and then put the ROI in the right place with the right size. Some one of you could ask me, how much big? Where should I put? Firstly, what is really important? Avoid artifacts. Secondly, you have to include the size, the, 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 the ROI within the lesion. And then you can have the corresponding size on the thyroid tissue. Of course, sometimes we don't have enough space. So we have to adjust. 
And this is the, f the, the reason because, unfortunately, also in the expert ends, the results are no more than 90% of sensitivity. In the literature, a lot of papers, especially from China right now, most of them are confirming that this is a promising, established now, technique. Also, we try to understand what are the limitations. We published a special issue in European June Radiology, and what was clear, remember carotid pulsatility, operator dependency, patient dependency, equipment dependency are the main reasons because you are not doing and you are not achieving the right results. Also, we published with Richard Barr a very good book that I suggest you to read because we included everything. But this is the first part. Now let's move on with something else. And something else is the new horizon is the share wave. When you throw a stone in the lake, you create the, share, the wave form. And this is what is happening when you push the, bu the button and then you start your examination. To now, there are three types recognized, the single point, the 2D, and the 3D share wave. Again, the scheme I showed you, but what are the results? You can have the propagation mode, then you have the representation in kilopascal and meter per second. Of course, right now you can do in real time, all together, group it together, to find the right results. Again, my suggestion, quality control, propagation mode. Where they are, more parallel, pull the ROI. Avoiding artifacts, firstly. Secondly, look at the results, and then you gave your report. Unfortunately, we know that cutoff value for share wave is even more variable than strain elastography. Secondly, remember, not all the cancers in thyroid are stiff. 10% of them are soft. So the suggestion is to upgrade if a lesion is not worries on the baseline, but becomes worries on the lasto, you can upgrade the score. Conversely, don't downgrade. Let's look at some recent case. How do you classify this case? Tyras, three, four, five. Simple. OK, benign or malignant? How many for benign? Nobody. How many for malignant? One, two, three. OK, the majority. So we started to do, we measure it to see if there is taller than wide or not. Then we put color Doppler, SMI, super microvascular imaging, that is another innovation, and 3D SMI that showed better that the lesion does not have any clear vascularization within it. So the statement, vascularized worrisome, mm, is not really fitting with the reality. Let's look at elasto. How do you call this elasto? Worrisome or not? Worrisome. The number, six. Share wave, five meter per second. In general, with this machine, more than four meter per second, more than 50, from 45 to 60. It's bad, okay, it depends. If you want higher sensitivity, so it's better 60, 45. If you want higher specificity, 60. And then continuing, the 3D share wave. This is another innovation that is very nicely showing you really the margin that were not clearly visible at baseline ultrasound. And final diagnosis, papillary carcinoma. Of course, you can use the 3D also with benign lesion. And, and also, another feature, you can have a point in the center that can help you also for gui guiding in the future the biopsy. What about literature? Some meta-analysis showing and confirming that unfortunately, still we have so many cutoff values. So share wave is still not at the point in which we can use in the daily practice, very useful. Elasto should be considered additional tool, should be used properly should be avoided in, in a case in which it's grossly calcified or with a cystic tensive area. Otherwise, you can achieve fast positive results. Wufum confirmed stenostography it can be used. Still not recommended as should, but we will see at the end. Still not so many papers. And this is anticipation. This is under press in ultrashall. We group it together, and now 
we, we rewrite it, should be used. So we suggest to use Elasto as an additional tool. What about CUS? We were also one of the first group to show that it's better strain elastography than CUS. However, you can have qualitative, quantitative evaluation with CUS, especially in order to evaluate the treatment of those nodules, this could be useful. But according to our guidelines, we do not recommend in the clinical practice. Let's look at what we usually can do. This was a patient that was submitted to FNH and then was treated with alkalization. Color Doppler, SMI, SMI, 3D SMI, look at the nice representation. Again, different planes, different possibility to show nicely the vascularization, strain astrography, again, soft lesion, shear wave confirming that is really soft lesion. CUS. CUS showed the very similar appearance to the surrounding parenchyma. This is the subjective evaluation. As you can see now, the quality of a single bubble representation is very high. But this machine has another feature. You can have the polychromatic representation of the time arrival of the contrast agent. And you see, if you see here, they have the same timing. And then you can put the ROI and you can compare. Conversely, could you click on this case, please? Worrisome lesion. Confirm that it was malignant. Look at the CUS. No vascularization. 30% of malignant nodules are non-vascularized. So we have to take in, in account. We, have we done? Not yet. Have you had your lunch? Not yet. So we have to wait for eating. Because we have to ask us, SRE or ShareWave, we need data. And now we have data. We just have this paper accepted on ultrashall, and we showed that strain ratio has higher sensitivity than ShareWave together can be combined to better provide a better specificity. We did this uh, very long study, including a relatively good number of patients, and then at the end, we, we had the results. What we did, we did classify with the KWAC. Of course, we can do with others. We will do it, we will try. We can also cooperate to use it, because we have data, so we can review the cases. And then at the end, we show the rock analysis, strong statistics behind, because otherwise the results could be affected negatively. But let's look for some other cases. How do you call this case? Benign or malignant? Was it tier 3B? So tier 3 means indeterminate at its cytology. B means more worrisome. Again. Look at the protocol, look at the study, look at the quality of image, because otherwise you could achieve not good results. Again, different planes, again the representation. Strain in astrography, very soft. Share with, with the new software that can help you to have really the grade of the representation, was quite higher. 425 was really in the gray zone, but then was benign. Again, another case, just to show you how also technology can help us to have a very nice image. And again, the consistency of the results between the methods, because at the end, we need to be consistent. Now, some worrisome cases. Let's look. What I'm using? Micropure. Micropure is specific software that can help us to depict only microcalcification. It is good for breast good also for thyroid. Then again, we did the same protocol. We did the evaluation with 3D. Look at the representation. Most probably, we have to change the paradigm. We have to see if the presence of only few vessels, but irregular on the periphery, this could be very, very worrisome. We are trying to figure out if it is true or not. But with this software, we can do try. Again, very nicely represented. Look at the number. Very stiff. Look at share wave, completely stiff. This one, three, four, five, two, no two nodules between, together. Ah, looks like, looks like 
again, representation of 3D, and then, of course, again, how to put the row here. Okay, this is a case that I showed you because we have a representation of soft and, and hard tissue. I usually put in the center trying to have uh, the most represented area. So mostly soft, so mostly should be soft represented. And then the number. And then look, share wave was completely, in this case, very useful. Other case, taller than white or not? Are you sure about it? Yeah? Look, it's easier also with the 3D reformatting. And then look at the number here. Very, 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 very not suspicious at strain, but sus more suspicious at share wave. Small, this was a malignant. Small lesion, so fast negative at strain, true positive at, stra at share wave. Small lesion, just to show you how can be very nicely represented also in very small lesion, five millimeter. You can do everything again, you can have good results again, and then you can confirm at the end the results. How do you classify this nodule? Four. Calcification again, represented nicely. Look at the vascularization, very regularly represented. Low RI, sometimes RI could be considered suspicious or not. Again, stiff and stiff at share wave. And this was a medullary carcinoma. Plus, look at that, lymph nodes. Look at the representation, very similar to the nodule. What is important, when you have a doubt about a lymph node and you have already an established diagnosis, look for the same findings. If you found, you do a good diagnosis. Also with CT and MRI. Usually this is what I teach to students and residents. And this is really resembling. We also published a paper trying to put together the results of medullary carcinoma. Unfortunately, there is not clear consensus about how to describe medullary carcinoma. European Association, the URADS, are recommending, not recommending, but suggesting to use Elasto. We recently published also a new editorial. Unfortunately, there are still open debates. Strain or share wave? I showed you strain, just better, yes, but according to the literature right now, strain has a higher sensitivity, confirmed also by this very recent meta-analysis. Lymph nodes, what are the possibilities for lymph nodes? If you see this kind of lymph nodes, this is a very reactive, very hyperplastic lymph node, very soft. Conversely, what could be this diagnosis? Okay, clinical scenario, you're right. Fever, intense fever. And this was a tuberculosis case, and I did this diagnosis only looking at it. Look at the vascularization. It looks like a caverna. So this is really the typical sign of a tuberculosis. Salivary glands, small organs, uh, but at least in my university, we have one of the best surgeons, so we see three, four cases per day. What we need to know, 90% of the lesions in salivary glands, in major salivary glands, are benign. If you deal with the submandibular or even with the minor salivary, the rate changes. Is higher the, the rate of malignancy than the benign one. Then, this is the epidemiology behind, but what is important, risk factors, ionizing radiation. We know that, that this is unfortunately one of the risk factors. That is explaining also the incidence. Between the malignant, acinic, and MUC epidermoid carcinoma are the most represented. Between uh, the benign, wartin, and pleomorphic adenoma. And mostly, they are the majority. I summarized for you some important tools. Male, female, age. When we do our examination, we take in consideration the anagraphic, the demographic data, and of course, the risk factors. And then, when we start to imaging modality, we know that right now, still fine needle aspiration is requested before surgery, 
Unfortunately, also for Fanidal's patient, also for salivary glands, the results are contradictory. And we are publishing, we already published it, we are publishing a paper that we showed that they were lower as a sensitivity. Unbelievable. We changed at least 20 diagnoses from fine aspiration. You know why? Unfortunately, the new pathologies are not so much experienced. And that's the reason. That explains. Of course, now we can do MRI as a second level, and I showed you what is the diagnostic algorithm. So, diagnosis by clinical point of view, ultrasound, then we decide fine aspiration, MRI, but now we are using CUS and Elasto. We try to have a new hope. I like Star Wars, so I know that we have to look forward. Sometimes we come back, as Star Wars is doing. We start and then we come back to the previous, to the prequel. Again, Elasto, we have some guidelines, and we have also some papers. Also, these papers are downloadable for free. I try to give you the paradigm on how to use all the different features provided by ultrasound to make diagnosis. Hmm, doesn't work. Could you help me? OK. This one is a paper on contrast enhanced ultrasound, published in ultrasound. And uh, just to summarize, if you have a lesion that is fairly marginated, heterogeneously eco appearance, and with uh, a regular vascularization plus stiff, you have to take in account the malignant one. Between the benign, how to discriminate? Sometimes they are assembled as baseline, but pleomorphic adenoma has the acoustic posterior enhancement, mostly frequent, sometimes happening also in uh, Wharton, especially depending on the size. But pleomorphic adenoma is less vascularized and is uh, stiffer than uh, the other one. So these are the two elements that you have to take in account to make the hyenosis. Let's look at some example. Vascularize it. Vascularize it SMI. Could you? Yes. OK, excellent. After CUS, the lesion shows relatively intense area of vascularization. Of course, there are some cystic areas within. So it is vascularized deletion. You can prove also by using the time intensity curve that can help you to be more objective in the evaluation. Elasto, in this case, was soft. Share wave, soft. Wharton. MRI, higher intensity, T2, but with intense enhancement, but not too much. And secondly, the DVI. So just to summarize, Vascularized, soft, and at MRI, DVI with very low ADC, after contrast, rapid washing. Conversely, I told you, acoustic posterior enhancement, polylobulated, not so much vascularized lesion. Also, after CUS, show it, also better here. You look here, is the within the lesion, here is parenchyma, clear and objective. Elasto, intermediate value, two, stiffer than the other one. And share wave, again, stiffer than the other one. Pleomorphic adenoma. Again, remember this kind of signs that can help you with ultrasound and MRI to make the hyenosis. Other case, <laughs> lymph nodes or pleomorphic adenoma. There are some uh, hyperechoic area within the nodule, but let's look at the vascularization. Have you seen unique pole of vascularization? No. There are some vessels, but not entering in the, that area that should be the hilum representation. So this helps you to discriminate if there is a lymph, lymph node or a lesion. Then, elasto, stiffer, stiffer. And contrast and answer, could you please click on the video? I would like to thank you, please. OK. Only some Bibles within. So this was a pleomorphic adenoma, proved by cytology. In conclusion, we have to use both of them to try to enhance the features that I try to give you as tips and tricks to characterize those lesions. Recommendation, 
still CUS is not recommended, but it's an active field. I showed you baseline with the high-end equipment. I showed you color Doppler. I showed you SMI, 3D SMI, then MicroPure, then Elasto, then CUS. At the end, we have to do what we call it as first multi-parametric ultrasound evaluation. Remember, I usually show this, case, this image on my because I ask myself, how can it be better? I have to be trained. I have to be aware of what is present in the literature. So read. Then use properly your equipment. Try to avoid artifacts. Follow the protocol that I showed you. At the end, this is a picture from Fontana, from, from, from uh, Piazza di Spagna. And uh, I would like to remind you that in November, I'm organizing, together with Francesco Drudi, who is present here, and other experts, Carla Serra, Mirko Donofrio, and Richard Barr, and Paul Sidu, and others will be present, Clevert and others. In Rome, November 15, 16, the weather would be warm enough. I hope not to show you the rainbow that sometimes happens in front of beautiful Colosseo. I thank, again, Wesson, Christoph, all of you for your kind attention, and we have uh, 10, 15 minutes for questions, and then I can show you practically how to use in the daily life your Elasto. I hope that you were not annoyed. I don't know if you have uh, the third peristaltic wave. <laughs> I hope not, but I thank you for, for your kind attention. Yeah, Peter, many thanks for your exciting and uh, uh, very comprehensive lecture. It was fantastic. Also, a uh, lot of literature and a uh, lot of experience uh, in this, in this uh, presentation. Thanks again. So, are there questions uh, from the audience? For a lot of questions, I'm sure. It's a, such a hot topic. None. Or None. too much confused <laughs> or too much uh, satisfied. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see you later. But okay, we will start to show you practically and then you can continue to ask if you want. So, what I usually suggest is to find the right position. It is important because also position can influence. Remember, we are looking for stiff representation. If you ask him to do this, but forcing his muscle will be also pausing to our maneuver. So, gently, kindly, putting him in the right way. Could you please turn up? Uh, thanks. After that, start with your probe. You can use this one. You can use this one. Which one do you prefer? You can start? This? Okay, you can start with this one. This one is the larger, not higher frequency, but can help you to find what is important. Secondly, gel. You have to cover the probe. Some of the experts are still considering that we need, especially for salivary glands, to have a fat pad, to have a really a, a barrier between uh, our probe, our hand, and the lesion. I suggest to cover with gel. Then you try to have the best imaging. Then axial or longitudinal. There is no universal consensus. But in general, I prefer longitudinal because in that case, I can have the better representation also of the, uh, the, of the glands, of the lobe. Then, of course, you can start, you have the good image, no artifacts. You start with color Doppler, then you go to SMI. I wanted to show you something. How to do what I showed you as a 3D SMI. You just freeze, then sweep, and then go here. There is a button that can help you to allow to smart 3D. And then, easy, you have the representation of the vessel. So, some seconds more, but the results are quite good. And as I found very interesting also for portal vein and uh, also for the hepatic vein evaluation, especially if I, I have to discriminate thrombosis or bad carry or other possible pathology. Then I continue with my examination. So I'm trying to be very perpendicular. Then I start just pressing elasto, 
the box. The box should be adjusted, I told you. Just be upward, below, and then you start your examination. Look, there are already some artifacts. Carotid artery pulsation. He is very, very excited. So please, mm -hmm. calm down, calm down. OK, now I'm starting. I start, I start, I do, I do, I do, I do. You know, I try to be very consistent. And then at the end, when I find the right representation, now, look, here, very artificed. Too much artifacts here. So I would never put here the roy, because otherwise this would be influenced. But to look here now, you, can, you have the possibility to put your ROI. In general, I put where it is more represented, avoiding the vessel, because sometimes also the vessel can create the problem. So I put one ROI and the second one. Mostly same level, although in literature have been proved that there are not so many differences. It depends on the artifacts. If there are no artifacts, you can choose different level. Then you have the number, you look at the number, and you put your number in your report. You continue, share with. Press the button, again, you put here, then you, you, you install set. Can we show the four representation? Quad view. Ah, you have the quad view. Now, what can this machine allow you to do. You have the representation of B mode and any other. Now you can put the ROI where? Where I told you. Avoiding the vessel, avoiding the artifacts where the lines are more parallel. So, for instance, here. Look at the number. Expressed in kilopascal and expressed in meter per second. There is no consensus about it. In general, we start with the kilopascal. Now we are moving to MS. We will see. Still, we have to need to work on it. So I showed you what we can do with all the different, but still, there is something else. I told you micropure. So you put micropure, and then you look for possible calcification. There is a vessel here, look. And in the vessel here, there is a very, very tiny calcification, very nicely and precisely depicted. So also in a normal patient, you can find something to show how to use a different software. If someone of you wants to try, I can help you to try and to do. Who wants? Don't be. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. OK, or better, do you have any other Possible question for me? May I sat satisfy some curiosity? Because we have two minutes. Still two minutes. Come down. 119, 118. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm joking. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I like the scheme in 007 or in Austin Powers when uh, Dr. Evel is saying, counting down. Any questions? Doubts? OK, uh, yes. I suggest not to use Elasto. OK, honestly, if you have a worrisome lesion, but very, very worrisome lesion, Elasto is an additional tool. You use, but considering that can give you some false positive results. If you have a lesion that is cyst, completely cystic, and or grossly calcified, I don't suggest, don't recommend to do Elasto. Totally agree with you. Never do it. Otherwise, you can have false positive results. Or you can, or you can do, or, or false negative. Depends, of course. Yeah, a question for you. Uh, regarding the vascularity of uh, these neoplasms, uh, like if it's highly vascular, how do you differentiate? Because uh, thyroid anyway is a vascular organ. So can we like, uh, confidently say that uh, the vascularity is abnormal or not? Yeah, that's the reason, because we are not including in our evaluation. So we don't suggest to uh, aspirate a nodule according to the vascularization. We, but we suggest to use vascularization for salivary glands, because salivary glands is less vascularized. And if something is very vascularized, you can depict. For thyroid, totally right. 
In 2010, I published the paper, and I was the first one to, to, to come against the use of color Doppler to predict the malignancy. Right now, there are 100 papers confirming that, yeah, it's just confusing. I, I, you know why? No, but I'm using why. Because if the lesion is hypervascularized, I don't suggest to do fine needle aspiration. Usually, our endocrinologists suggest to use uh, thyrotropin to reduce the vascularization, and then they do fine needle aspiration. In that case, you can save some false negative results. So, you know, not useful for predicting malignancy. Useful in general, especially also when. If you do the mean invasive treatment in uh, Latina, one of my previous residents now is a very good interventional radiologist, he does a lot of radiofrequency ablation and laser ablation. They found very useful to use CUS before and after to predict the outcome. And the endocrinology now have a weapon to say to them, we have treated or not treated, instead of medical nuclear scintigraphy that is reducing as a number of possibility of the request. Other question? I hope to satisfy, I, I have satisfied your question. Hi, thank you for the lovely presentation. Um, I was wondering which of all these um, improvements has actually helped you reduce your biopsy rate? Because that's really what's killing us at the moment. We reduce it by 10%. Right now, when we saw a lesion that was really not worrisome, although it was more than two centimeters, because, okay, according to the, God, the, the society guidelines, if you follow the European, if you have a lesion more than two centimeters, you have to aspirate. The American one stayed 1.5, others one centimeter. Honestly, to now, we are evaluating, since we published the data about the growth at the interval and the correlation with the malignancy, if the lesion does not show any suspicious uh, features, really suspicious features, we don't aspirate. For instance, the, ty the Tidus 3A, I showed, but uh, we published three papers to now, we saw that uh, among 1,000 of cases, so 1,000 cases that we have done right now with the three A, we saved more than 90% from the operation. Because we achieved 90% of sensitivity by using Elasto. Still, we are working on it to try to reduce even more. But we reduce it by, for instance, at least 10% for sure. Of course, we have to try, the, the surgeon should trust us, and also the patient. But if you explain that in the worst scenario, also post-dating post the operation, the outcome will not be uh, uh, accurately and too much uh, affected, the patient accepts. You know what? Because we are using also the worrisome sign. If I found, okay, according to the American guidelines, if you have a worrisome lesion, tyrus 5, but less than uh, eight millimeter, they don't recommend to operate. They recommend strict follow-up. But in those cases, if I see that there is an increase in size, I suggest operation, although if it is five millimeter, or if you have lymph nodes, or if you have other signs, if the lesion is located nearby the trachea, in that case, changes we suggest operation also if they are very small. Because unfortunately, these are the cases that may be very aggressive. In general, thyroid carcinoma is not aggressive, but 5% of them can be. So we, what is the real issue that we have to address is to find a way, putting together all the technologies that we have right now and thanking uh, the improvement, we need and we hope that some more new one will come out very soon to reduce those number of patients that we have not to miss. And for the intermediate ones, which you don't aspirate? We um, follow up. Yeah, what's the interval you use for follow-up? It depends. Up? If they are classified as uh, tyrus 2 and 3, one year. If they are 4, it depends on the classification, of course. Okay, indeterminate, 6 months or 12 months, depending also on the size. If it is more than one centimeter, six months. If it is less than one centimeter, 12 months. Thank you. You're welcome. Prego. Some more questions? Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. 
-hmm. Thank you for your presentation. Um, my question would be if you find two lesions in a thyroid lobe, one uh, being uh, not very suspicious, the other one more suspicious, do you apply separately yeah. for each lesion or these? Yes. I Even apply, if they are close I, I, I apply together? to both. I apply to both because sometimes, unfortunately, also the non-worrisome uh, non appearing lesion can be stiff. In that case, I suggest to do fine needle aspiration. Uh, in general, what is the ideal that we are looking for? We need 3D real representation of elasto because we need to do to all, to the whole lobe. Unfortunately, still this is the real limitation about uh, our technique, but in general, with all imaging modalities. Thank you. You're welcome.